Hi, welcome. I'm Cheryl Gleason, curator at the MAC, and we are here at our inaugural Inside the Artist Studio. Our first guest during this, uh, this venture is our artist today is Ron Hall. And uh, this is going to be a way to get insight into our local artists. So we hope to be featuring at least one every other week, um, eventually maybe one a week. So stay tuned, like our Facebook page. These will all live in infamy on our um, YouTube channel. So for our fir first question up, Ron, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started as an artist. Were you self-taught? Uh, did you go to school for it? Uh, originally, I was self-taught. Um, my earliest memory was being three years old, just sketching and drawing. And um, it's kind of like in the fifth grade, people kind of were stopping and go, oh, I like what you're doing, and wanted me to draw them things. And so that kind of made me think, maybe, maybe I got something going on here, so. Nice, nice. So that's a pretty young age. Were you at that point thinking, like, could I make a career out of this? Or was it just something you continued with as a more of a hobby through high school and whatnot? Yeah, it was probably not till high school that I really thought that I would do anything with it. Um, it was kind of a form of entertainment, and I was pretty quiet and um, shy as a kid, but it was a way to get attention and communicate without having to talk to people, make people laugh, and usually get in trouble from teachers for drawing. Yeah, <laughs> I was a doodler as well. You couldn't even read Peachy on my uh, folders. So what is your first memory uh, from being an artist, or, or a really good memory from your childhood that kind of sticks out? Um, believe it or not, I was three years old. I was trying to draw a dinosaur, and I just remember being unhappy with it, um, crumbling it up, and then my mom saying, wait, 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 this is good, and that, that's about it. That's the end of the story. So really not much has changed over the years. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm still crumbling up stuff, and people are digging it out of the trash. Hey, this yeah. is okay. Yeah, well, I think we all go through that. Uh, um, so when did you, at what point in your career, did you actually call yourself an artist? I know for a lot of people, it's when I sell my first work, it's, a label I give to myself so that I can, you know, sort of live and breathe that. What, what was it for you? In all honesty, I'm kind of hesitant about calling myself that. It's, it's just something I like to do. I kind of feel, this is cliche, but I kind of feel like we're all artists in some regard, and um, we all have our creative process. But um, I guess high school, it was like, all right, I guess I will do this. I did change gears, but um, it was probably in high school where I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I guess I'm an artist. Wow. You, you, that was far earlier than I did. I was very reluctant as well. I think that is next to how do I price my work, I think that's just one of those questions we artists really struggle with. When do I actually introduce myself as an artist? Um, so what kind of mediums do you work in? Uh, primarily acrylic. Um, I do do some work in mixed media, but acrylic's in there also. Um, so I generally draw it out and then um, and paint it in acrylic. Um, it's it's really thin. Um, I use water and thin it out, and um, so that's my primary medium, acrylic. I just like the way I can make it lay flat and do its thing. But um, when I do jump into mixed media, um, I'll use latex and pastel sometimes and kind of work in that regard. Nice. Now, do you use oil pastels or do you use soft pastels in your mixed media? Um, usually oil pastels. I, I just grab pastels that we have laying around and, um, and just draw with them just to add some different textures. And Now, you have a very, I would say there's, uh, you have a very descriptive style. Like, you know, there's some people that you can look at their work and uh, five paintings on a wall and not know who they are, but people can pretty much guess your work. I mean, you and David Peterson in our community have a very certain style and go, oh, that's, that's a Ron Hall or that's a David Peterson. Um, how did you come upon that style 
what what was it that sort of got you there? Um, I think being a a teenager of the '80s, um, really loving graphic art. Um, I mean, whether it was uh, Andy Warhol and um, some of the works of the '80s being very vibrant and flat and clean, um, I kind of gravitated to that, and I, I took a it was called graphic art or commercial art um, in the 80s, I think it was called, and just really like that flat, vibrant, simple shapes look, and I slowly started incorporating into my, my work. Um, I think my early work kind of looked more um, like stencils, and now I'm just kind of using simple shapes and coloration just to kind of create rather than a more realistic piece that would like blend gradually. Um, I'd rather use simple shapes to, to build the, the image. So, looking at some of your early works, um, and now looking at some of the work that you've done, let's say in the last three years, I mean, I've known you for a long time with uh, Rancho Cordova Arts when we were doing art at City Hall, and that's kind of how I got into it, and I definitely see this slightly more abstracted uh, pieces of the art, and um, I definitely really love that new way that you're doing it. I want to say um, your earlier work was more curvilinear in terms of shapes, but now you've gotten a little bit more hard edge shapes, but it still flows so amazing in the painting. Thank you. I think I started um, with a piece that, I don't know if, I, if we can show it later, but um, it was called The Joy Within, where it was um, dancers and they were kind of fused into the background and that, that kind of took me in a new direction where um, the main image, the primary image and the background start to fuse and um, that kind of got me in a new abstracted uh, arena and now I'm kind of starting to use the technique of breaking things apart um, with shapes, almost like a shattered glass, we were talking earlier about it, but um, yeah. just different ways to create. I love um, an abstracted, take on just normal things we see in real life so right right well you mentioned the um the uh ballerinas the 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 um what was the name of it something within a joy within joy within um now that that particular one if i'm not if i'm remembering is a real muted color tone how do you pick like I've seen some that are really bold, some that are very muted. How, what's, how do you pick the, your coloration? How do you go about deciding what that's going to be? Um, generally, the mood of the piece, um, with that piece, I'll, I'm going to look at it for reference, but it, it's got windows and a lot of soft pastels, and I really wanted to show um, joy and light coming into the ballerinas. And... Um, just soft pastels, um, the flooring and the reflection kind of has a, a gradient of, of kind of blue greens into really pastel colors. And so um, just kind of wanted to bring in a lot of light and sometimes softening the colors kind of really brings that to focus. So would you say that the, the color of the works has a lot to do with how you want the viewer to um, view the overall piece? I mean, I know that you do also quite a few black and whites that are um, extraordinary value range that have a really big impact. Yeah. Um, it is, so color is definitely part of. Yeah. I when I'm creating a piece, in all honesty, I just create what I like, and um, because even even as an artist and someone that studied art history, the first thing that I gravitate to immediately is just color and then maybe design. And as I get closer, I might go, oh, this is what it's about. I try not to read the tag until the end. I want to create my own um, impression of what the piece could be. And um, generally color is the first thing that grabs me. And so when I'm designing a piece, um, I think of color immediately. And so that kind of lends to process. Every artist has got their own process and how they are inspired. And you know, do you do you see see it first? Do you do you feel it? Do you imagine it? What's your process? What's your artistic process? How do you depict 
what you're going how do you decide what you're going to depict I usually take a walk at nighttime and music is key to what I'm creating and okay. um, I'll just flip through um, scroll through music and music will set the tone of if I'm having a problem like a background or what I want to create next um, I'll generally listen to music and help um, solve what I want to do so music is key for so I guess it's a, a listening feeling kind of thing so do you a uh, huge Kandinsky fan um, I like his work a lot yeah yeah <laughs> it's one of those you know he thought that and we've had this discussion before and we even did a little workshop on it of colors depicting sound and and your work has so much movement and the colors that you choose are really um, they're just so harmonious um, and oh, and you. I think that the the one thing that I have to say about your work that I appreciate the most as a viewer is the value. You really can create value within, no matter if we took any of your images and turned it into a black and white, you would just see the value changes. Right. I, I think it's like a puzzle that I'm building, again, rather than do realism or realistic where I'm blending like a face, I'll use those values to kind of build and um, Sometimes if, if I've done my job and accomplished, I want to, if, if I stand back, it, it has that blending effect. But as you get closer, you can say, okay, it's segmented into values. And so, um, yeah, I really, I really build that puzzle in the design process. And then when I'm actually painting, if it happens to be a musician, getting that feeling, I listened, like I just did a Prince piece and listening to Prince, um, when you create in a graphic nature of those little abstract pieces, getting that feel and trying to get the little characteristic and idi idiosyncrasies of a person or an artist um, is harder. And so if I listen to his music and kind of get a, a feel for the individual or a specific song, then I can, I can, you know, design that in a way that, okay, I can tell that's Prince rather than, oh, that's an abstract dude playing a guitar, so. Okay, so those of you that follow Ron on Instagram or Facebook, uh, when he posts his new picture, which he just finished, um, we're all gonna, what song should we listen to? Uh, is, there, <laughs> is there one song in particular? Yeah, I, I named it after a song. Um, it's off Sign of the Times album called Adore, and so that's what it's called. Okay, so that's what we should <laughs> listen to so that we can get the, the full impact. Um, you know, I, I know for me, um, I, I like to imagine what does an artist's studio look like? Where do you do your creating? On my kitchen table. On the kitchen table. <laughs> well, there's a canvas on top of the table, but yeah, on the kitchen table. It's just the best light I have, and I can listen to music and get in, so everybody, kids, get in everybody's way. <laughs> kids at home, you don't need to have a real fancy setup. Um, you just need a kitchen table. And moms, it's okay to put some deli paper or some butcher block down and call it good. Um, what, would, what would you say, I know it's, it's, it's always hard, it's like you know, defining who's your, which child is your favorite, because we, we, we think of our pieces as like, we've spent so much time creating them. What are some of, a couple of your favorite pieces? Of my personal of work? You, or? That, that you have done. Oh, uh, wow. Um. This one because it's completely out of my head and inspired by an artist I like, Basquiat, and um, it's completely intuitive where the other works that I, I do, it's so planned out and meticulous and the drawing is forever and all right, the, the puzzle of how am I gonna do the background, how am I gonna get the lighting. This was just, it is what it is and it's gonna happen right before me and um, yeah, I like the fact that it was a big piece, which is not normal for me. And yeah, it, this is a big piece 100 for you. 100% intuitive. And so um, I, I appreciate the process more than anything of intuitive. I, I have to say that this is one of my favorite pieces of yours, um, just because I too love Basquiat. Um, 
It, does any of Basquiat's work come into any of the other work that you do that's a little bit more refined? Um, I think a little bit. Um, Horn Players is one of my favorite pieces that I saw at the Broad Museum. I was just like, wow, it's my favorite piece, and it's there where it's three panels. And um, just the, the history of jazz and, um, I mean, he and I, besides this piece, generally have completely different styles, but his work still inspires me by um, just the flow and um, the energy, I guess, would be. That's what I kind of take away from uh, your pieces in comparison to Basquiat is he has a lot of energy, whether he uses it in color or line or actual words, um, whereas you, you use shape and color to create that energy in, in a way right. that um, is different yet very similar. Yeah, I think I appreciate uh, Basquiat's art because it's so intuitive and um, he just lets it flow. And that's something that I've, I've tried to strive to do is not be so confined and um, rigid. And, and I, I think I've started to do that a little bit, let it flow a little bit within my style of art, so. Don't you wonder, I mean, he, he died at such a young age. Don't you wonder what it would be like if yeah. he had a few more years? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, what genre of art or style of art do you like looking at the best? What, what sort of, you know, whether it's the, I, I, for a lot of people, they may do a type of work, but their favorite type of what they might collect or, or whatnot is quite possibly different. Right. I, I really love um, impressionist, post-impressionist, just the flow, the coloration, just the um, sense of real people. It wasn't about kings and battles. It, was, it got into, you know, just the average person. And um, with that, I really appreciated Degas and um, Cezanne and uh, all the artists of that, of that period. Cezanne was probably more Monet. Um, just the color, the flow, it didn't look exactly representational. It, it started to get a little more abstract. So would you say that Degas is someone you take a lot of yeah. mentorship it, from in terms of yeah, just his 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 coloration, his sense of movement. Um, he started with just studying movement, race horses, and kind of moved into dancers and ballet. And I liked his sense of creating a moment where you're showing movement, even though it's in a um, two dimensional stopped piece, but you can yeah. still see that movement is going on. Yeah, I always wondered why you did so many ballet dancers. <laughs> It's always befuddled me to no, to no, to no yeah. end. Uh, what type of art or style of art do you like least? Um, I Let me preface this by I, I totally um, am in awe and, um, and just like, wow, um, artists that paint super realistic and just their, their time and their talent. But for me, um, I... I I prefer something that's a little more abstract, something that just catches my, it's a little different. Um, I think images that are super realistic don't capture my attention as much as stuff that's a little more abstract and just shows variances of style and, and color and that type of thing. Got it, got it. You know, I, it's funny, I have that same thing. Like, um, Trump Loy, while being so impressive that that people can do it and do it well yeah that's what the camera was designed to do and taking a photograph to me is um it captures that very same thing so i i like to see i like to be able to go up and s to a painting and see where that brush stroke is and right and um i i heard this this kid once uh and I, I can't remember where we were. I think it was actually here at the Mac. And uh, it was a kid off the street, wandered in, and we said, hey, come on in. And he started looking at this piece, and I don't even remember whose it was, but he said, don't you wonder what was the first 
brush stroke. Now I thought to myself, that's what I like. I like seeing the brush strokes and the, the, the different, you know, textures on a canvas or right. on a board. Well, both of us being total fans of art history, I think when photography got going in the, uh, the mid 1800s or whenever it was, you started seeing a difference in art styles. It's like, all right, people can take pictures. And that kind of gave people, they didn't have to do spot on por portraiture anymore. They could like, all right, I'm gonna vary this a little bit. Right, everything, everything changed as far as topics. And so what do you see yourself working on in the future? Do you have uh, like, what are, what are the next Ron Halls coming out? Do you have something planned or are you waiting for inspiration to hit you? Uh, right now I'm building for a show in July that's going to be um, centered around music. So I'm trying to do as much music related art as I can, but I'm really... People? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. People. Maybe some more of this stuff where it's just um, nice. more free flowing. But um, I think I really love um, diversity and cultures and so um, might do some pieces with different cultures. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so where can we find, so the viewers have seen this and they've seen a couple pieces of your art and they're like, God, I got to see, I got to see this in person. Where can I go to find some Ron Halls? Um, originals are at City Hall and, um, and, uh, The art at City Hall in the, in yeah. the lo lobby? Okay. Um, I'll be I'll be showing at Art League of Lincoln in July the, the music related show. Um, I've got some original in prints at a restaurant in Rockland called Zest uh, Kitchen, and that's yeah, that's a new one for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's a vegan vegetarian type restaurant, and so I've got some original and prints at that one. And then Morning Fork, I have a lot of art, uh, more uh, canvas prints there, and um, I really like showing in in coffee houses where. People can just go in and enjoy the art. It doesn't have to be a straight up gallery. Now, do you still have some art over at the Strad Meadery here in uh, Rancho Cordova? I do not, no. Okay. Uh, that's what I love about showing at different places is I can move around in the Sacramento um, corridor and give people an opportunity to, to see it that may not have yet. Nice. And then, uh, of course, we have some, uh, you'll, you'll be submitting something to the member show. Correct, Rancho yes. Cordova member show. This is our third annual coming up. And artists that you will uh, see um, going forward are um, the artists that we have. For the first ones that we're going to show are artists that you'll see here at the MAC at Open Studios. Open Studios is uh, put on by Verge Center for the Arts. And the MAC will have 10 artists here. We'll be using both floors. And uh, what you're witnessing here, this is our lending library. So I just want to draw attention to if you are looking to be inspired or want to know more about Degas or Basquiat or some of the artists, maybe you want to learn watercolors or something, come check out our lending library. It's totally free. Whenever we're open, you can come on in, check out a book, Take it home, bring it back, check out another one. And this is one of our resources for the community. So Ron, it's been my pleasure to uh, talk well. with you. Um, this is a family show, otherwise I'd ask you, as James Lipton did, what's your favorite curse word, but uh, we, we will leave that for a different show. Okay. Um, so for now, this has been Inside the Artist Studio. I am Cheryl Gleason. I, I guess I'm still Ron Hall. And this is still Ron Hall. Cheers to creativity.